If stuff hits the fan, are you guys ready? In this video, we're going to share how John is preparing the RV for the apocalypse. Welcome back to the RV Odd Couple. My name is John. And I'm Mercedes. We RV pursuing freedom, independence, and adventure. Because life is so short, guys. And John thinks it's going to be really short <laughs> because he's preparing for the apocalypse. Well, you guys know I am I am a prepper. And so I, I believe in preparing for everything. And certainly 2020 has been an extremely rough year. And the pandemic should tell us that we really need to be ready for everything because you don't know when they're going to shut things down. So... I started doing a lot of research on food, on shelter, on weapons, personal security, on backup power. I'm gonna lay out everything that I have thought of for being able to move the RV quickly, you know, where I'm going, having a plan. I'm gonna bounce all of that off you guys and I'm hoping that you guys can help me fill in the holes. We try to be really thorough, but we inevitably forget something and the RV Odd Squad will always remind us and fill in the gaps. Exactly. So what we're really talking about in this video is hoping for the best, praying for the best, but planning for the worst. So at this point in 2020, all of us should have a, a thought out plan in place, especially if you RV full time, because one of the blessings that we have is we can move if we have to. We can move fairly quickly if we have to. And it may not even be civil unrest. I mean, we have a tropical storm coming to Florida. Right. And so we might need to bug out for other reasons, right? Exactly. Um, do you have a way to get there? Like if technology failed, do you have a paper map? Right. Um, because heaven forbid our phones stop working, we have a whole generation of 20-something year olds that wouldn't know how to get it. They couldn't get a mile away from their house without a phone, right? But this is the world we're looking at right now. All the unrest going on, not only civilly in this country, but with other countries around the world like China with the hacks that are going on. So you need to be ready in case your phone doesn't work or in case your GPS doesn't work. You got to be ready for everything. So for months now, I've been planning bug outs. So I know where I'm going and we have three different choices if we have to get there fast. I've done research on the routes that I will travel to getting to the destination. I've got a few different destinations that I can get to quick. One that's about 600 miles away, one that's about 1200 miles away, and one that's about 2400 miles away. It's also very important that you travel at night if civil unrest gets really bad. Having a route that lets you avoid the big cities is huge. Yeah. The other thing that you really have to consider is, is that you have as much fuel as you possibly can on your rig along with mechanical fluids that you're going to need. You want to have that stuff stored somewhere in the truck or the RV. You're going to want to pay close attention when you cross state lines as you're traveling because state different states have different laws with firearms and so one state might be okay for you to travel with your firearm locked in one compartment in the truck other states will tell you that you need to separate the two so it's so important that when you cross a state line you've done your research ahead of time to know the trouble that you can get into if you don't properly pack your firearms Another important thing is to downsize, like make sure you really only have the essential items that you need. Yeah. I really struggle with this because I want to downsize all of his stuff and he wants to downsize <laughs> all of my stuff. What that means is I've got to lighten the load on my RV. By lightening the load in my RV, things that we just don't use, getting them into our storage bin makes room for additional things that we can carry so that we have everything that we need. The other thing about lightening the load on your RV is, is that you can travel longer distances on less amounts of fuel. So now we're gonna talk about essentials. Obviously, you wanna have your truck and your rig in top working order so that you're not gonna have a problem when you leave. I would say get your oil change done, have extra fuel filters with you. Anything that can go wrong could go wrong. So make sure that your vehicles are properly maintained and ready for a long ride. So the next thing to really consider are medications. And this isn't just having enough Tylenol and ibuprofen on hand, but if you have any prescriptions, having an extra month supply could be helpful. Another one that we learned the hard way, Pedialyte Pops. Have, if you ever give yourself food poisoning <laughs> while you're traveling, speaking from personal experience. And Sage likes them too. Yeah, she does. But yeah, medications and first aid kits, just anything that you might need. And also a first aid kit. You can't assume that there's gonna be a hospital near where you are or, the, or it's gonna be open 
and we can all see that you can't really you can't really rely on 911 right now. The next piece that I've taken care of is I've gotten us 90 days worth of food on the RV. So I've had to remove a lot of my tools and a lot of items that I haven't used for a while, right? And when you're looking for food, you want to get things that are more dry. Um, heavy cans are not going to do you really well in an RV. In a house, they would be perfect, but not so much in an RV. Dry goods are really important. Beans, rice, um, I like noodles, uh, grains, wheats, right? All of these things are fairly light and you can pack a large amount of it. Just try to think hard about what it would be like to live on the food that's in your RV for the next 90 days. And don't forget the dog. Don't forget the dog. So we've got 50 pounds of food for Skip, which will last about three months. The next thing you're gonna wanna have with you is a good supply of clothes because I mean, right now it's 100 degrees everywhere, but you never know. The weather can change pretty quickly. So you wanna have winter, you wanna have summer clothes, and you kinda of wanna have the intermediate fall and spring as well so that you can dress no matter what the condition. So the next piece is a big deal, guys, and it's it's water, right? It's, it's having enough water on your rig when you're traveling. And so we love the Berkey water filter. We've screamed about it. You can take just about any type of water and gravity filter it through and get really clean drinking water. It's also super important to have some backup plastic bags. And so Mercedes and I went ahead and we got some plastic bags. We'll leave a link below in the description. I love the Berkey, but they have been struggling to keep in stock since mm -hmm. the pandemic hit. So we're also experimenting with ProPure. We'll link to that below. Yeah, check out ProPure, guys. We're looking at that because Berkey has been back ordered for months and we're constantly getting emails from our people that they can't get a hold of it. So any type of gravity fed water filtration system will work just fine in case of an emergency. The other thing that's really, really important is, you know, try to keep all of the tanks topped off. So you want to have your fuel fill constantly. You want to have your fresh water tanks filled if possible. If you store it for a long time, you're going to want to drain that and fill it back up. So make sure you keep your fresh water tank topped off. All right, the next one is one that drives Mercedes crazy, but I think about the worst case scenario. And so one of the things you want to do is you want to be able to um, spend money if the dollar crashes and falls apart. So we have silver coins. And silver coins can, can be used for barter, so can food, um, so can ammunition, which believe it or not, you can't get ammunition in this country right now. You wanna have a backup supply of silver to spend as you're traveling. Obviously, if you're gonna be carrying some money with you, you're gonna wanna have a fireproof safe. Now, Mercedes and I keep our identifications in there, our social security cards in there, but it's also a great place to store money. But remember, these things can go up super fast. So you want to have a fireproof safe to protect your personal belongings and your money. Toilet paper has become quite the commodity recently. Um, I'm sure you could get like four or five cans of Spam for one roll of toilet paper. I mean, <laughs> the price of that is worth gold, It's right? another item that could be bartered, guys. <laughs> but yeah, just have those kinds of items on hand, you know, detergent, soap, the basic needs. Toothpaste. The next thing that you're going to want to have, which this one is actually, it makes sense. You should have it no matter what. I don't know about the silver, but this one is a weather radio that if you don't have power, you can charge it. And it's really important to have a radio because heaven forbid you don't have any power. You're going to want to find a way to <laughs> keep in touch with the world, keep them charged. But if they're not charged, you can crank them very very helpful and this one also has solar on it you want to be able to listen to the local news where you're at and also emergency broadcasts another thing that i'm really looking forward to getting into i've done a little research on this is a two-way radio two-way radios are fantastic and they're very hard to be blocked so if cell phones ever go down the guys that have the two-way radios are going to help spread information all over the country and get it, get it out to all of us. One of the weaknesses is that all of these communication systems require power. Right. So um, not just your liquid fuels, but also, you know, batteries, power. A, a power station, you know, you need a way to charge these communication devices. One of the products we got is called a Max Oak Bluetti. 
It's a lithium cell that we charge. It's actually backup power run by a lithium battery. The thing is phenomenal. It takes us about six hours to charge. I can run a circular saw off of that. I can run AC, I can run DC on it. It's a fantastic system and everybody should consider getting backup power just in case. We'll link to that below. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to carry with you just in case is you wanna have a generator. And Mercedes and I use the Champion 3400 inverter dual fuels. We pair them together. The other tricky part about this is you're gonna to wanna to have as much fuel as you possibly can get when you set out traveling. If for any reason you're forced to pull over off the side of the road or go out in the middle of nowhere, you're gonna to wanna to have some power. And so make sure you have a good generator backup. If you have solar, it's a huge bonus. Um, we only have two solar panels. We also connect that to a Max Oak Blue Eddy backup power system. So not only can we charge the Blue Eddy off of AC or DC power, we can actually charge that off of solar power. Another one that I didn't think of, but I'm glad John mentioned, is having your neighbor's phone numbers like written down. Yeah, heaven forbid anything happen and you can't access your cell phone for any reason, you've lost all of your phone numbers. So it's a really good idea to have a little phone book with all the important numbers, neighbors, family members, just those people written down in case you can't access them. Whatever your destination is, you're always gonna wanna let a friend, family member know what that route and destination is. And you should also be checking in with them as you go. And then what I think is the most important item on our list is personal security. Being able to protect yourself, your family, and I even think you're responsible to protect your neighbors. I'm licensed to conceal carry in my state. The state of Florida has reciprocity with 38 other states, but there's a lot of states that don't have reciprocity with Florida. So it's my responsibility, number one, to be trained in the firearms that I carry, and I am, to practice with those firearms, and also learn ahead of time the different laws as I cross state lines. So the goal with firearms is to never ever have to use them. That's the ideal situation, but heaven forbid you should ever have to use them and you're able to walk out of that situation alive, then you could have a host of other problems. You right. might have to defend yourself legally and might have to explain what happened, lawyers, a, a whole bunch of other things. So that's why when we had our situation happen last year where we couldn't call 911 and it was terrifying, when we had that situation happen, we learned about legal defense for yeah. Second Amendment firearms issues. Knowing what we know now, we carry USCCA insurance for the purpose of protecting us. Heaven forbid we should ever have to defend ourselves. It's so important that you have someone to defend and protect you if you are ever forced to defend and protect yourself or your family. So make sure you have self-defense insurance, especially in this day and age, you really have to do it. I believe in my Second Amendment right, but not all states are friendly to the Second Amendment. And if you are in that state and you are forced to use your firearm to defend yourself and your family, you may need millions of dollars in legal defense just to fight them back. USCCA and Law Shield are two companies that ensure I actually love my USCCA license because it's got training, it's got videos, they've got a fantastic app that you can download on your phone that will warn you when you, tr when you cross state lines. It's going to tell you all the different states and what those laws are and it's going to really help arm you with the facts you need to know to safely carry a weapon and defend you if you're ever forced to use it. We've linked to all these items below the video in the description guys. Any purchase you guys make using our links, we make a little bit of money. It doesn't cost you a dime more. It just helps us to support the channel. Make sure that you've hit the notification bell because you could be subscribed but not getting notifications if you haven't clicked the bell. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you did not enjoy the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up as well. And if you didn't see our 911 video where Mercedes and I had no phone service to call for help, we're gonna to connect to that in the next video. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Need to sit. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Can you, do you really need to do that? Really? <laughs> now you're just making me want to do it more. <laughs>